Hey guys, we're going to do another section on geolocation, but this time we're going to implement a Google map. So we're going to pinpoint, we're going to take the information that we got uh, and actually place it on a map. Okay, so to do this, you need a Google API key. Okay, so you need to go to code.google.com slash APIs slash console, and that'll bring you to this developer console. Um, and we're going to be using the Google Maps API version 3. And there's some information here about the, the API, um, where and how it's used, stuff like that. So we just want to click over here on API access. And this is where we can get our keys. Um, so I'll, I have a key already. Uh, but I'm going to generate a new one just for this, just for the sake of the tutorial. So uh, we want to create a browser key because we're using uh, client side language. So we want to get a browser key. And you can put in all the websites, all the domain names that you want to use, um, that you want this to use this API with. Um, if you leave it blank, then you can use it on any website. So I'm just going to create a, I'm going to leave it blank. And you can see it says any referrer allowed. For instance, this one down here, I have a strict set of referrers. So only this, these domains can access this API. Okay, so uh, now what we need to do, we'll just keep this page here for now. Let's go back to no, I'm not notepad, NetBeans. I have a clear project here and I have it loaded in Ripple as well. So let's just add in our starter code. And I'm sure you know what this does by now. It throws out the, the uh, device ready event and we catch it in this function. So what we want to do is in, the, in this function we want to say navigator dot geolocation dot get current position and this looks very familiar because we just did this and this is going to take two callback functions on success on error so naturally the next thing we need to do is create the on success function which will take a position parameter all right now before I go any further we need to we need to actually include the um, Google Map API so up here in our script tags I'm gonna say script type equals text slash JavaScript Okay, and we need an SRC, which will point to a URL with our API key. So let's go back here. And this is our key right here. Um, we need to include that in our script tag. So if we go to the documentation for the Maps API, you can see an example. here. All right, so I'm just going to grab this. Copy that. Oh, there's no closed script. All right, so you can see in this URL we have to replace this here with our API key, so let's grab that. Copy that. Replace this API key. Okay, we want to paste that in, and then we want to set the sensor to true or false. And I'm going to set that to true. And 
I think that should be it. I do want to put just a little bit of styling for this map. So style, you're going to say HTML um, is going to have height 100%. Body no margin. Oh. And no padding. And we're gonna have a div called map placer. will have a height of 100% and also a width of 100%. All right, so now let's get back to our on success method. All right, so we want to set a variable called LAT LNG for latitude longitude. And that's going to be equal to new Google dot maps, new Google dot maps dot lat long. And so we're instantiating a new map object. And this takes a few parameters. We have the position, uh, position dot chords. And if you remember from our last video, we, we got these, these values, um, and now we're actually putting them to use in a map. So position.chords.latitude, and also position.chords.longitude. Okay. Looks good. So the next thing we want to do is the map options. So uh, variable map options equals this is going to be a JSON object type of thing. Uh, center. And longitude. So we want it centered on the latitude and longitude. Um, what else do we want here? PN control. PN control false. We don't want that. Um, zoom control. We'll let our, our users zoom, so we'll give that a true. Well, this should be a comma. So you can set all kinds of parameters. If you go to the API documentation, there's just a ton of information. Uh, and we want to say zoom is going to be 16. Okay, so zoom will be 16. And then map type ID is google.maps dot map type ID dot roadmap so we don't want any satellite or anything that by default and we can put a semicolon here and now we want another variable called map and that's going to be equal to new Google dot maps dot map and inside here we are gonna actually put our div where we want the map so we say document dot get element by D and that's going to be map placer okay so that that's one parameter the first parameter is where we want to put this now the second is going to be our options. So map 
options, which is coming from here. I think it's a lot easier to just put it in a variable uh, and then put it here. And actually, to make it even easier to read, I'm just going to take this. We'll say variable, I don't know, map content. All right, so then all we have to put in here is map content. That looks a little better, a little easier to read. And then finally, we want to create our marker variable, marker or object. Marker equals new google.maps.marker. So you can see they treat everything as an object. Uh, and this takes some values, so we're going to open some curly braces, position, position is going to be our lat long object variable, and then map is going to be map, and that should do it, that should do it for our on success method. Dot chords, dot longitude, center. All right. So instead of typing out the on error method, uh, it's just like the, the one in the last section. So I'm just going to paste it in. So uh, it's it's pretty much the exact same. Um, we're just creating a string, it's making an empty string, and then if there's an error we get a switch statement depending on which kind of error it is and then we're putting the result into um, the map placer ID okay so the only thing we need in our HTML is that ID that div so div ID equals map placer and that's it this is uh, this is our entire HTML body of our page, okay. So let's first try to run this in Ripple. Okay, so now it seems to be working, but this is not where I am. This is nowhere near. I'm not even sure which state this is. You can see it's working good though. I mean, we can zoom in and out. We can't pan because we didn't we didn't let the user do that. You know what? I don't even think we're in Oh, it's yeah, so Toronto. I am in Boston, so it's quite off. Um, but this is it just has something to do with the virtual device. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this video here. And I'll continue um, another video uh, where, where I actually install this on a physical device. And I guess before I do that, we can go through the export process again. So from Adobe Build, we first want to go to Git and make sure that we're in our application folder, which is test app. And I'm going to do a git add all and then I'm going to do a commit am and for a comment we'll just say geomaps and I'm going to push Alright, so that got pushed to GitHub. Now I'm just going to go over to Build, Refresh, and I'm going to go to Update Code, Pull Latest, wait for these to load.
All right, so I'll download my APK file. I'll just replace this one. And if we go to our computer, I'm going to go to my downloads and test application APK file, copy that and put that actually the my Android device for some reason isn't coming up. Let me try to plug it back in again. Alright, so there it is. And I'm gonna put that in the Android folder. First I'll delete this one. Alright, so now it's in there and now I'm going to start another video uh, showing you how to install it on the device.